RTMS now is also considered as a evidence-based guideline when pa patients don't respond to um, one or two antidepressants. What would be the main differences between RTMS and electroconvulsive therapy? It's a good question. I think T uh, ECT is still, uh, I mean, that's simply the facts, is still the most effective uh, treatment in, in depression, obviously. So it has a very high efficacy. Uh, but of course we know that the side effects of electroconvulsive therapy like, uh, like memory issues, uh, concentration problems, etc. Uh, are uh, a bit of an issue uh, and that can vary um, uh, from person to person obviously. Um, but it is uh, problematic uh, to some people. Um, I think the perfect positioning of TMS uh, at this point in time is as a kind of uh, stage before people consider uh, ECT. I think the, the side effect profile is very benign. Uh, the only side effects that people might report is, uh, is scalp discomfort, uh, headache, uh, because we're stimulating the muscle mm -hmm. tissue as well. So it's really muscle tissue uh, pain that people might experience. Uh, but with repeated uh, sessions of stimulation that, go, that dis disappears and goes away. So that also responds well to a painkiller if it's quite mm -hmm. uh, unmanageable for people. Uh, the theoretical risk that is there with TMS is a seizure. Uh, but the likelihood of getting a seizure in clinical practice is uh, significantly lower than getting a seizure as a result of prescribing the SSRI. Mm -hmm. I think it's one in uh, 3,000 sessions or something like that, but it's a very low theoretical risk. Um, yeah, so overall I think that the side effects are very manageable for, uh, for TMS.